My name is Carlos Restrepo, and this is... Hi guys, welcome back to Classical Conditioning. This is episode three, featuring the one and only Graham Bichard. Graham has spent over a decade training the minds of some of the NBA's most elite basketball talent. He has also mentally trained three consecutive number one NBA draft picks in Ben Simmons, Carl Anthony Towns, and our boy from up north, Andrew Wiggins, as well as number three NBA draft pick, Jalen Brown, and number four, Aaron Gordon. He continues to collaborate with USA Basketball's U16 and U19 teams in order to instill a mental training program for the next generation of top performers. He's also the director of mental training for Lucid, a San Francisco-based company dedicated to helping athletes train their minds so that they can perform at the best of their capabilities on the world stage. On top of all that, he is the author of a book called Play Present, as well as the voice for the Lucid app and a narrator slash MC for Lucid Performance's CD entitled Unlock. Beyond this interview, I will also be doing a review of the book, the app, as well as the CD. So I hope you guys enjoy. So here we go guys, as promised, the product review. We'll start off here with the book, Play Present by the one and only Grant Bichard himself, a mental training program for basketball players. That being said, guys, a lot of the principles in this book can actually be applied to many things. It's really more than just a book for basketball players. Here we have some great quotes. Uh, 80% of the game is mental. Um, What you'll see here is more quotes by iconic sports figures, and you'll see that actually throughout the entire book. Yeah, you gotta train your mind, most definitely. Uh, The one and only the Black Mamba himself. And now let's run the plays. But, don't forget, you got to trust the process. So here we have kind of an example about how some of the concepts are run through. We have pre-game, in-game, and post-game with their practices included. So here's an example of a concept. So we have what's important now, the pre-game and practice, the in-game and practice. And what's awesome is we usually get this little questionnaire with the post-game and practice. So now we're going to move forward towards the app. So this is the foundations package. This is just an example of one lesson. Experience evolves your understanding. And bam, we move on to the next icon, which is uh, the saved icon. So you'll be able to see all of the lessons that you've saved. We move on to history here. Uh, And again, just recording your history, seeing what lessons you've done. On the small little icon here is a trophy icon, and it'll track where you are in the program, your longest streak, and your current streak. Now lastly, we move on to the Lucid Performance Unlock CD. Here as you can see, um, there we go. Now we have uh, 10 tracks. So it's a CD composed of 10 tracks, all of them really geared towards emphasizing a specific concept of the mental game. And I think what's really powerful about this is it shows um, the power of music in terms of its ability to you know, help calm the mind. And I really think that that's kind of what Lucid wanted to get out of this CD. Um, Graham here primarily acts as a narrator and an MC, and the tracks are orientated around a hip hop, R&B, and a bit of a pop vibe. Um, really great because the tracks are clean so you can listen to this uh, while you're in the car with the kids or if you're out working out on your own so it's a pretty great awesome CD for that and I'd highly recommend it for anybody that wants to uh, get their mental training in also you know perhaps while um, moving passively through some errands or while working out so without further ado let's continue the interview 
Do you find like a lot of athletes pre-living or post-living moments? Because I know that that happens in music a lot. You know, you, you either yeah. think of the stuff that went well in the past or you are concerned about the future, but sure. you kind of, sometimes it's difficult to get into that zone about well, what about now? Yeah. So, so you have to practice being present, right? So mm -hmm. if you're like, I want to be more present, it's a lifetime's practice. And pre-living and reliving happens all the time. You know, it's, it's part of the human experience. There's nothing wrong with reflecting and there's nothing wrong with planning. Mm -hmm. It's, but when you're supposed to be present with performing, not the right time to plan for the future, right? So we have to know. And when you are planning, be present with planning. You know, actually plan. That, that's awesome. Just be conscious of when you're doing this stuff. Because a lot of times when it's time to perform, we're in the planning or reflecting moment. And it's like, this isn't, this yeah. isn't that time. This isn't that time, right? And that's like a, it's like a samurai being like, how did I swing my sword yesterday? It's like, oh man, you're already dead, man. Like, yeah. if you're, if you're like in the fight going, how is this going to work out tomorrow? Like, oh man. It's over. So, yeah. Once again, they had life or death. So it kind of, I don't want to say easier, but it forced them into the moment as a musician, you're, you're not going to die. So you actually have to practice being present because if you don't, you're going to miss everything. And you're always going to be in reflective mode or planning mode when it's, time to perform and let your training happen and enjoy that experience of letting go and letting it happen as opposed to always just training, getting better and getting better and getting better. Um, there's a difference between that and performing. Mm. So I think, um, cause when you perform, right, it's performance time. Um, and then if you have that great spiritual grounding of like, Hey, this is what I do. This isn't who I am. It allows you to let go a lot more and totally trust all of your training. If you think your life's on the line cause you have to play the violin perfect, you're probably not going to play it very well. You know, it's going to be uptight. If if you're a samurai and you're like, man, I got to swing at this sword perfect. The guy who's more relaxed out there and more in flow is probably going to chop you in half. You know, it's just, that's probably how it's going to work out most of the time. Um, the athlete that's in flow is much better than the athlete that's uptight. Just that's, that's how it works. But flow means you got to put yourself out there, right? It means yeah. I'm all the way in here. I'm facing the music. I'm totally present. And of course that requires compassion back to our initial thing. So it's all a process basically just to guide you here so you can actually experience all the stuff you want to in life and not let these emotions just take you out, you know? So do you think like this idea of getting into that survival mindset, do you think that comes from uh, stimulus and response? I see something, I react yeah. immediately versus creating yeah. a stimulus space response. Yeah, well, we need space, right? That pause, right? When I mentioned win the war, wisdom, awareness, and respond, it's that pause. When you feel the stimulus and you pause, that's the moment of freedom right there. If you can be aware to pause, you are gaining, I mean, everything. Everything happens in that moment of pause if you can do that. Uh, and they call it survival mode because, hey, check it out, Carlos. We survived. We made it. Me and you are talking. Like, we, we, we won. Um, we beat the tigers when we were living in the jungles, right? We beat all that because we had to be on edge because you never knew if a tiger was coming out. Nowadays, there's no tigers. So we have to, our evolution comes from going to this, from survival to thriving mm -hmm. because everyone is in survival mode all the time and they're not facing life or death situations. And so that's the transformation or the transformation opportunity is coming through to the other side and being mindful, right? And, and realizing, mm -hmm. man, I can thrive and yeah, I'm gonna go play my piano right now and it might be terrible, it might be great, but either way, honestly, nothing's on the line. Yeah. You know, the most important, so, but that's thriving, right? And of course, how would a piano player play in that space? Amazing, amazing. <laughs> like they would be, it'd be like virtuoso performance, right? Because they're at peace. And that's how an athlete performs in a virtuoso performance. They're like, man, I was a total peace. Wasn't concerned about anything else uh, but what I was doing. So easier said than done, but that's our opportunity right now in that pause, instead of reacting, if we can respond, it'll change your whole life. Mm. It'll change, it literally will change everything. Damn. In, in my opinion. So. Mm. You know, something, as I've talked to other people about, I guess, kind of leading up to this interview, um, I kind of wanted to talk a bit about your story. Cause I know yeah. that, you know, as we talk about kind of all these concepts, um, there may be people that are sitting out there and saying, well, what do you mean? Like, like what yeah. sort of journey and I know that for you uh, to get to this point, it hasn't been something that was overnight. I know that it didn't take yeah. days, months. It took, you know, I, I'm, I, if I'm not mistaken, over 10 years to get to this point. Yep. So I, I started doing this work in 1997 as a 19 year old. So I'm 40. So it's 21 years later. People I started doing like 
sports psychology or going into this field. I did this training when I was 19 through healing, through learning to meditate and visualize compassion. I didn't learn sports psychology for four or five years later. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then once I got into sports psychology in 2004, it was 12, um, uh, 2016 when I, be- when I became known. So it was 12 years after going all into this field and 16 years after doing the work on myself that I became like an overnight success, you know? So it's like all the sayings are true. Like, you, you know, if you're trying to win the lottery, sure. I wasn't trying to win the lottery. This is just a tried and true practice, right? Just a little bit every day over time, do something you love, be good at it, do it for a long time. Of course it works, Carlos. Of course. Uh, my first several times doing this, no one was showing up. No one worked with me. I didn't make money for a decade, you know? And so, yeah, that's, that's what I went through. And you have to go through that experience. And when I meet young people today, when I say young people in their low twenties who are coming out of college, coming into the work and it doesn't just happen for them right away. And they just bail and quit and go settle. I'm like, Oh man, your job is to stick with this and fulfill this thing you're here to do. And it is going to take 10 years. Where have you learned otherwise? You know, and it is going to take time. Now you can go do something else and then you can deal every day with like, I'm not really doing what I want to do, but I had to deal with the emotions were so uncomfortable going through this, this other experience that I just wanted to like get the emotions away, do something. And then the rest of your life, you're like, why am I not doing what I want to do? And you, and you deal with that tension or you deal with the tension of doing what you want to do. And you deal with the tension of putting, you know, a good decade in before things start really breaking through. And then they break through though. And, and you're like really thankful you did it. So for me, I'm thankful of being 40. I don't live with regret right now. I live with, man, thank God I did this. Thank God I did this because I'm doing what I love. Um, I'm taking care of my family. Um, it required me to go through every bit of fear I've ever experienced in my life. I had to go right through everything, money, everything. I had to go through every single thing, but that was my journey. And to me, I was gonna do my journey. And I'm not saying that's other people's journey. That was my journey. Mm-hmm. So when you, when you find your journey and it's calling you, um, it's, do you have the courage to follow it? Right? Do you have the courage and the bravery to jump in and check and explore and check this thing out that's calling you and then stick with it when it doesn't just manifest in like a year or like two years, right? You have a plan on how to make it work, on how to like make this thing work. Um, so as I go through it and I get to a little bit later in my life, like I'm doing it. 40 for an athlete is like being 21. Like I'm not even close to my prime in my work. Mm-hmm. So what if I bailed on this when I was like 25? find something that means something to you. That's the only way I knew to stick with this. It meant something to me. Surely get to something that's even more crystal clear than just general sports. So I wasn't just like, oh my God, sports psychology. It was sports, right? And then it kind of became like, maybe I'll be like a, an agent or maybe I'll do sports management. You just kind of, you know, kind of like dating, like you put yourself out there over and over and over again to learn who you are and to, to, to find a match for you. But you got to go through a lot. Mm-hmm. And so that was the process of even getting a sports psych took doing sports psychology, just yeah. getting there. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, man, it's a hell of a journey, but, uh, I've always considered myself a spiritual being and I'm on that journey and that's the journey I want to be on. And when you talk to me, you can feel my energy of love and, and light and, and fun and joy. So how, why would I do anything that didn't produce this energy? That makes no sense to me. Yeah. You know, this is what I consider to be wealth, Carlos, is this energy, you know? So um, that's what I share in the world, you know? So that's wicked. Um, That's Uh, that's about it, Graham. Look, I just wanted to say um, thank you for giving me the time. It's my pleasure, Carlos, man. I'm glad we could finally get it done, man. Thanks for working with me. I really appreciate it.